Definition of favor. Pastor Steph gave us this definition. I love it. It says preferential treatment, grace, blessings. It's an accelerator. It's an endorser, right? These are all the things that favor brings to your life. And uh, the first week, she talked about I am favored. Week two, she talked about just how favor flows, not only to you, but those around you. Last week, she talked about being set apart, how Daniel was set apart. And let me tell you what happened. These messages have been so good, I'm not going to lie. I'm in my office, I'm praying, I'm preparing, and I'm like, this girl's talked about everything. I don't know if you've ever been there. And I'm like, so then I finally, I feel like I got it, and I write down, like, this is it right here, Lord, I got it. And then I wrote down what she said, and I said, this is the exact same thing. Wow, it was that good. So I'm kind of really just going to give you my take on favor today as we wrap this up. And, but I'm telling you, I believe God wants to speak to you through this today, amen? Remember, every time you come to church, he's got something for you, right? There's no such thing as Sundays off. If you're in the building, it's because he's got something for you. What, maybe, maybe it happened in worship. Maybe it's going to happen during this word. Or maybe it's going to be at the prayer time at the end. But just know God has something for you today. We're going to look at a couple of favorite scriptures to kick us off here. Psalms 512, it says, Lord, how wonderfully you bless the righteous. Your favor wraps around each one and covers them under your canopy of kindness and joy. I don't know about you, but I need God's favor to wrap around me. Amen. And then Psalms 30 and 5, I love this one too. It says, I've learned that his anger lasts for a moment, but his loving favor lasts a lifetime. Amen? I don't know about you, but I need that favor every day of my life. You know, another pastor friend of mine was, uh, gave me a definition of favor I thought was really cool. He said, uh, it's the guarantee of his presence and the provision of his power to accomplish his special purpose in your life. Amen? I don't know about you, but you need favor to do what God is calling you to do. Amen? So, and, and again, you may ask me, Pastor Mark, what's the big deal with this favor thing? We hear about it all week. Why do I really need it? And I'm going to go back to another one of Pastor Steph's scripture. I'm just ganking everything she has done. But at least I'm giving credit, right? It's not plagiarism as long as I'm giving credit where credit's due. And it's in the Bible, people. You know what I'm saying. But Luke 2, 52, when it says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. And let me tell you what, I realize if Jesus can increase with favor and in stature with wisdom, all those things, that guess what? Then I too can increase in that. And you still may be asking me, Pastor Monk, what's the deal? I, I, I get it. We should have favor. We should seek favor. We should want favor. Let me tell you what John 14, 12 says. It says, I tell you this timeless truth. I love this verse. I tell you this timeless truth. The person who follows me in faith, believing in me, will do the same mighty miracles that I do. And even greater miracles than these because I go to my Father. So here is Jesus telling me that, you know what? Everything you've read in this book that you've seen me do, you're going to be able to do that. But you're even going to do greater things than I've done. So I don't know about you, but not only do I need God's favor, I need man's favor. I need, to, I need all those things to accomplish the plan God has for my life. Amen? So number one, if you're taking notes, I just got three quick points and we're going to be out of here. Number one, expect it. Look at your neighbor and say, expect it. Listen to me. If you haven't learned by now, church, this is week four, you should expect a level of favor in your life just because of who you are. Hear me, just because of who you are. How many of you got kids, right? Any parents in the room? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever thought for a minute all the favor your kid has just because they're who you are? Just, I mean, just because they're who they are, right? Like, think about it. They go to a switch and they flip it. They expect light to come on, right? They don't realize you're working all week to make sure that that, that switch works, Right? <laughs> They don't realize that they almost didn't have that switch flipping. But you, you've done what you had to do. Do you know what it's like when they go to the refrigerator? They expect it to be full of food. Have you ever, have your kids ever went into the kitchen and you ain't got no snacks? Mama, where the snacks? Like, it's like, because they expect it to be there, right? They walk in, they have an expectation. They expect a level of favor just because of who they are. When they grab that remote, they expect Disney Plus to be there and Hulu and Netflix and everything else, right? They just expect it. They don't ask for it. They just expect it to be there, right? They just walk around. They expect, they expect clean clothes. They expect you to wait on them hand and foot, no matter how old they are, right? Like they just expect these things. Man, I can remember one time Jordan was just getting into guitar and me and Leash went to a guitar center and we were going to buy him. They have a cool used guitar section. So I ain't buying him a new one yet. We're going to see if this thing sticks. But I can remember we found him a used guitar and this amp. And the whole time we're in guitar center, we're like, why are we buying this kid a guitar? Like, it's not his birthday. It's not Christmas. We don't have, like, what are, what are we doing? I don't know. Yeah, we probably shouldn't do it. 
Uh, yeah, this, sir. Yeah, we'll take this. Uh, I don't know, man. It don't even make sense. Like, and you go home, it's nothing special. Like, oh, we just wanted to get you this. Why? Because you have certain favor just because of who you are. Amen? As a follower of Jesus, like, there's certain things, there's certain favor you should just come to expect. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if we're back in the kids' area and somebody throws something, I'm like, yo, who did this? They're like, oh, that's pastor's kid. I'm like, oh, it's, it's all good. I'm just kidding. The pastor's kids are great. They don't throw anything. But you know what I'm saying? Like, there's certain level of favor that you should just expect because of who you are, right? So let me read a couple scriptures for you as we jump in this. I love this story here uh, found in Luke chapter eight. It's dealing with uh, the woman with the issue of blood. You may think, what has this got to do with favor? But let me tell you, let me just read this for you real quick. I'm gonna start in verse 43. And it said, a woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding and she could find no cure. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe and immediately the bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus asked. Everyone denied it, and Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you. But Jesus said, Someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out from me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble, fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had immediately uh, was healed. Daughter, he said to her, Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Now, what's cool about this story is, is this woman expected a miracle to happen. She wasn't hoping, she wasn't like this 50-50, I'm gonna fight through this crowd. She had an expectation in her heart, like if I can just touch his garment, I can be healed. You know, it made me think about something where it's like, you know, there's a huge difference in this place when you come into this place expecting God to meet you here. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about you, but there's some Sundays, let's be honest, you, you're just not feeling it, right? You're just like, I got to go to church because it's the right thing to do, blah, blah. But I'm telling you, it's different when you're excited about it on the right here because you know like, God, man, you're going to show up today. God, in worship, I know you're going you're gonna to meet me right where I am. It's, I'm telling you, life is different when you live with an expectant heart, right? And you look at things with expectation, right? Like again, the level of favor we have, like there's a level of favor that we just expect. I don't know about you, but I just expect certain things to work out because of who I am. Amen? And not that I'm special, but I realize like, you know what? I am a child of the king, right? So there's certain things that just should work out in my life. You know, there's a story um, in Matthew 8 when it talks about this centurion soldier who came to Jesus and says, man, I got a servant at home who's paralyzed and he's, he's in pain, man, can you heal him? And Jesus is like, yeah, sure, let's roll over there. And, and he's like, no, no, look, I'm a man of authority. You don't even have to come to my house. I know if you just speak the word, it'll happen. Do you realize what, it, what, what level of expectation that is? Do you know how many times in life, I don't know about you, but sometimes we always think the worst. Maybe you don't, let me just speak for me. I know there's times situations happen, I'm like, oh Lord, what's gonna happen now? I immediately go to the negative. When I realized, you know what, I have a level of favor in my life and there's nothing I did to receive it. You know what I'm saying? Like brand new parents or parents to be, when that baby is born, come on, y'all just had yours dedicated last week, that little baby, like, let me tell you, they do nothing but, but poop and cry. Let's be honest, right? Everybody's been in there pooping and crying. And guess what? You're smiling the whole time. You don't even care. You're like, oh, it got on me. How sweet. Take a picture, Right? You don't care because the favor this child has who does nothing for you. Do you realize that's what we're like to God? God's like, punk, he did it again. Why'd you say that? And that kid, right? Like there's a level of favor we have. And I want you to come to expect favor in your life. Like walk around and just expect, no, there's a certain level of favor I get just because of who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like I love on the movies when you got the guys trying to get in the club and, and the cool guy already went in and his nerdy friends are coming behind him. They're like, oh no, we're with him. They're like, oh, okay, let him in. Like that's how I feel sometimes. Like it's nothing that I did to deserve this favor, right? But it's because of who I'm connected to, there's certain things that just happen. I'm like, sweet, thank you, Jesus. So again, I want to encourage you guys to expect it. Expect favor in your life. I'm telling you, it's a mindset. It's, it's, it's just the way you look at it. Like wake up and just expect. You know what? Like even Monday, tomorrow is Monday. We're like, oh, great. Work starts, the week's back, the grind is back. And expect it to be a great week. Expect it to go in there and make a difference on your job. Expect bonuses and raises. I mean, expect great things to happen. Expect somebody to buy your lunch. You know what, go in there with an expectation of like, you know what, just because of who I am, I make this place better. When I get here, things change. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's jump to the next one. Everybody say number two. Number two is acknowledge it. Look at your neighbor say acknowledge it. And this is important, this is important that you need to take a moment and acknowledge the favor you have in your life right now. I want you just to think for a moment. Think about all the favor you have in your life. 
I was thinking for just a moment. I was like, and if you're having trouble thinking of favor, let me just give you the first one that really helps me. I woke up today. And I know that sounds crazy. Sometimes you laugh, but like, like really think about it. Like, man, I got another day with family, friends. I got, Jesus has given me another day um, to live this life, to do great things for him. Like, that's just the start. Like, boom, eyes open. Like, here we go. We got another one, right? Your spouse, your kids, where you woke up at. You got a house, you got an apartment, wherever that is for you. And you may be in here saying, Pastor Mike, you don't realize I live with a friend. I only got my own place. Thank God you have favor with your friends and they putting you up. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm telling you, it's a mind shift. If you acknowledge the favor in your life, you'll find there's way more favor than you realize. You're like, man, I made it to church today. AC don't work, but that's all right. I didn't need it, right? I had to get a ride with a friend. That's all good. Like, boom, then all of a sudden you get here. There's people greeting me at the door. It's like, hey, people's encouraging me. I come in in this worship. Oh my gosh, come on. And when they started fighting my battles, I'm like, yo, service is over. We're going to stay here all day. But you know what I'm saying? Like, like you realize there's favor all around. You know what I'm saying? Like when you just start acknowledging that, you see there's favor everywhere. I love Proverbs 3 and 6. It says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. I'll, it, now notice this in that order, in all your thing, basically acknowledge God in everything and he will show you where to go. But there has to be some acknowledgement. Now, you know, um, I wrote this down. I really like the way this sounds, so check it out. It says, you're gonna like this, Pastor. It says, the more you acknowledge the favor in your life, the more favor you will see and then the more favor you will receive. Come on, somebody. I know, it wasn't as good as I thought, but I tried. But it, but it really made me think about it when you acknowledge favor. Like, if you've been in church for any amount of time, like way back in the day, or maybe you were a kid at the time, I'm gonna tell you, we used to have a thing in church called testimony service, way back in the day. And let me, let me just tell you this, your testimony, let me just pause and let you know, your testimony is the most powerful weapon you have in your life. People ask me all the time, I don't know how to share Jesus. Can you share what he's done in your life? Because I'm telling you, that's all you need. You haven't read the whole book, I get you. Words are hard, I get you. But I'm telling you, if you just share with people what God has done in your life, I'm telling you, that's all you need. And there's nothing you believe more. But back in the day, we'd have these testimony services and they were, they were meant to be great, right? You come up here and you get to share all the good things God has done with you. But in the churches I was a part of, it didn't take long for those testimony services to take a dark turn to the enemy's got me today, the devil's done this to me today. And it just went on this like, it's like, whoa, what happened? Like, I thought we were overcomers. Next thing I know, I was like, bro, this, this, this Jesus thing ain't working, I guess. Everybody's getting beat. But let me tell you why. It's because what we were focusing on, right? Because so sometimes we don't acknowledge the favor that is in our lives. Like just favor for just being you. Again, that's why I said you should expect it. But I'm telling you, the more you begin to acknowledge the favor, you'll begin to see favor in your life. You'll begin to see those things and be like, God, thank you for this. God, thank you for that. And all of a sudden you realize, man, what God is trying to do in your life. And I'm gonna tell you what, man, I've had favor. I've had a lot of favor in my life. You know, and I was looking back, and this is what I realized. I want to share with you guys. This, it may be funny, maybe not, but I've had favor on every job I've ever worked. Like, I've looked back, I've said, man, on every job I've had favor for some reason. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't mind working. I work hard, but I just had favor. So I want to read you some of these jobs. Man, I worked for Domino's Pizza back in the day. I would run around and put those tags on your doors. You know, the coupons you hate to pull off? That was that guy. I worked at the boys club. I worked at a seafood restaurant. Man, I was a Terminex pest control guy. I can kill them bugs. Uh, I was a prison guard for a little while. Yeah, I've done strip searches and all. We don't want to go there. Um, I worked in a produce warehouse, a commercial air conditioning plant. I sold cars. So I've done all these things, right? And I realized in some of the times I, I knew it in the moment, I could tell, man, I got favor in this place. But there's other times I didn't realize it until after I was out of that season. I would look back and be like, man, you had so much favor. You know, like when, whenever I was selling cars, um, I've worked there for about a year and everybody that if you ever left that job, there's no such thing as a two week notice or a notice. It was like, no, you don't want to be here. Get your stuff and get out. So I was offered the opportunity at my church to go full time. And I'm like, I'm all about it. Let's go. So before I told my general manager, I went and packed my whole office. I've had everything loaded in the car. Cause I'm like, I know what's about to happen. So I'm going to be ready when he's like, just get out of here. I'll be like, all right, peace. So I walk into his office and he was a very intimidating guy. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'm leaving, da, da, da. And he's like, all right, well, you know, I hate to see you go. Just so you know, you can work as long as you want. If you want to work two weeks, a month, whatever you want to do is follow me. And I'm like, funny story, uh, everything's packed. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and go. Yeah, I know, it wasn't good. But, but anyway, so I had favor, right? Well, fast forward, I come to Texas in 2000, 
2011, right? So I get to Texas in 2011, and Pastor Al was handling business here. If you know Pastor Al, Pastor Al is Pastor Steph's dad, and he founded this church over 40 years ago. I mean, you can look at this campus and just know what kind of man he is and what God was doing in this place. And I'm going to be honest, like, I've had, I feel like, now he may feel different if you ask him, but I've always felt like I've had tons of favor with Pastor Al. Like, he's the, he's the guy, right? But I'm telling you, I felt like since the day I've got here, I've had favor with him. I can remember one time, um, and like, I'm like cutting grass and doing random odd jobs. And one time we were going to clean up in the kids' area. There was all this junk over here. And I'm like, man, we need to get rid of all that. And they're like, no, uh, we need to leave that. Pastor Al is the only one that can you know, let us know. I was like, well, all right, I'll be back. They're like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to go get him. They're like, what do you mean? I was like, I'm just going to go to his office and get him. It's fine. They're like, you don't even know what he's doing. I'm like, yes, it's fine. So I can remember going to his office. I don't. <laughs> hey, Pastor Al, can I borrow a minute? Just walk with me. Just walk all the way back, like 10 miles, all the way back to the kids' area. And anyway, he's like, yeah, get rid of it. Do whatever you want. But again, I just had favor. I feel like I've had so much favor um, with Pastor Al. And just while I'm being here, I've had favor with Pastor Steph and Pastor James before they were even pastors, which kind of helps me now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> favor is good. Favor is good. I need a little time off. Favor is good. I can remember Pastor Al taking me, instead of going to the weed eater, I got to go to the Mardell's run and go to the bookstore. I'm like, yeah, just riding in style. Then I get there and he's like, pick out some books you think will sell. And I'm like, oh boy. I got no idea what to get. But anyway, favor continued to show up in my life. And the next thing you know, youth pastor position came open. The pastor I was like, hey, I want you to be youth pastor. I'm like, oh, I get. Like, there's probably other people that would be better suited for it. But if you say so. So again, I've seen all this favor in my life, even, in, even here in Texas, even here at this church. And then I decided to leave this church. If you don't know that, man, sorry to break your heart. But if you weren't here, then it's all good. Um, but about 2013, I... Uh, Again, I just decided to leave. I, it wasn't a God thing. It wasn't anything. It was just, I, I decided my time here was over. It was a bad decision, wrong decision. I've shared that before. But yeah, it was bad. Well, so what I did is I left this church, went and took a regular full-time job, and I was serving in another church. And I'm gonna tell you what, the job I went to, I had zero favor. No, listen to me. I'm, for real, I had none. I had no favor. And, and, and this is what it made me think about, that sometimes God's favor in your life is not showing you favor. Hear me, I know that messes you up, but sometimes God's favor in your life is him not showing you favor. Because I know the type of guy I am. Had I went to this job and had the normal favor I had on every other job, you know what? I may have never left that job. But nine months later, because the favor I had in this place, I was able to leave the no favor job and come back to the favor church. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, and again, just so you know, when you leave somewhere and try to come back nine months later, there has to be favor for that to even work, if you know what I'm saying. So again, sometimes the favor God is showing you is by not showing you favor in that moment. Because sometimes you're wanting something so bad and God's like, that's not what I have for you. All right, let's, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let me, let me tell you one other funny side note on that just while we're on this. Uh, when I went to leave, I had a note on my car by Pastor Steph. Um, back when she wasn't Pastor Steph, but this was my last day here. I walk out to my car and there's a note wrote on a prescription card, which is weird. But this is what the note says. Oh, it's funny. It says, Dear Bunk, this is God. You are making a bad mistake. Turn around. <laughs> Love God. Yeah. One of those notes I wish I would have listened to a little bit better. But anyway, if it wasn't for favor, it wouldn't even be here. You know, sometimes favor's not fair. Favor doesn't make sense. Right? We've all looked around. We've all been on the job or we've been somewhere and it seems like, man, God is doing something for someone else other than you. I've been there when I'm like, man, I want what they got, what God's doing in their life. And, and when you come to realize, like, if that's what God had for you, guess what? That would be you. You know what I'm saying? When you acknowledge that there's favor in your life and God knows what he's doing. Amen? That sometimes we think we know a little bit better than he does, but I'm telling you, God knows what he's doing. Amen? In Revelations 2, 4, there's a scripture I love. It talks about uh, returning to your first love. And I've preached this before, and I love that scripture because it takes me back to when I first gave my life to Jesus, when I was excited. I'm not saying I'm not excited now. Don't get me wrong, I'm excited. But I can remember when I first gave my life to Jesus, and all I wanted to do was learn more about God, read my Bible, pray, go to church, do all those things. And it seems like sometimes the longer we get in this, we start losing and forgetting about what all God has done in our life. It's the same thing with the favor. If you're not acknowledging where God is showing up in your life, right, if you don't acknowledge those things, sometimes it's easy for the enemy and for you to talk yourself into, you know what? Man, God's not doing nothing in my life. Man, I look around and everybody, it seems like God's blessing everyone but me, right? We start getting jealousy starts coming in, bitterness, all those things. Man, that's not what God wants for you, right? God wants you to return back and remember like, no, you are favored just because of who you are. 
just because of who you are, with nothing you've done to earn it, you're favored. But I want you to acknowledge that favor, amen? Because again, the more you acknowledge favor in your life, the more favor you will see, and the more favor you see, the more favor you will receive, amen. Number three, number three, respond to it. Look at your neighbor and say, respond to it. This is an important one right here. You need to respond to favor. And what I mean by that is a lot of times as I'm going through the Bible and I'm looking at this, a lot of times the response to the favor is on the other side of obedience. Amen. Nobody likes that word, right? Obedience. I started to say favor spelled O-B-E-Y, but I'm like, no, nah, I ain't trying to do that. <laughs> you know, Patrick, Pastor Steph mentioned this story last week and I want to go back to it. In John 21, it talks about when Peter goes fishing. Let me tell you what's cool about this story. With the context of this story is, you know, Jesus had already told Peter that you're going to deny me. He's like, there's no way. Well, he denied him. Next thing you know, Jesus is crucified. Jesus is put in the tomb. And Peter is back where he started. He's back on a fishing boat, right? He's out there just fishing all night long. And then Jesus walks on the shore. He don't realize it's Jesus. And this is what Jesus tells him in uh, John 21, 6. Then he said, throw out your net on the right-hand side of the boat and you'll get some. So they did. And they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. And I realize in this moment, everything Peter's been through, right? Peter, I'm sure, feels guilty. He feels terrible. He feels like he let everyone down. All these things. And then he's out here doing something he knows how to do. And he don't even know it's Jesus at the moment. It's telling him, why don't you throw on the other side of the boat? Do you realize that we have those opportunities in our life? There's times that God speaks to us. And God is asking us to do something. And just saying, you know what? What you're looking for is literally on the other side of obedience. Now, again, we all have a level of favor because of who we are, right? But we know that Jesus grew in his stature. Jesus can grow in his favor. I'm telling you, you can grow in your favor. And a lot of times what I found in my life and what I find in the Bible is it's on the other side of obedience. God is asking us to do something. Amen? You know, there's a story of Naaman in 2 Kings. He's this commander of this army, and he has leprosy, right? So he's got leprosy, and um, they end up invading Israel, and they take uh, this servant girl. Um, he takes her to be a maid in his house. And the maid mentions like, man, you know what you need to do? You need to go hook up with Elisha. Elisha, uh, there's a prophet there that can heal this leprosy. So he gets wind of this and he's like, you know what? That's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna read you this real quick. In 2 Kings uh, 5, 9 and 12, it says this. So Naaman went with his horse and chariots and waited at the door of Elisha's house. But Elisha sent a messenger out to him with this message. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored. You will become healed of your leprosy. But Naaman became angry and stalked away. I thought he would certainly come out and meet me, he said. I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and heal me. Aren't the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the Far Par better than any of the rivers in Israel? Why wouldn't I wash in them and be healed? So Naaman turned and went away in a rage, right? So here's Naaman coming for this healing. And I know he's offended because he's like, yo, I'm the commander of this army. You ain't even gonna have the courtesy to come to the door. You're gonna send your messenger out here? even though he's telling him just what he needs to do. Now, luckily, if you're reading the story, Naaman's people convince him, like, maybe we should go do this. He does this and he is healed. But I just wanted you to try to see that a lot of times, I'm telling you, on the other side of obedience, God is waiting with your miracle or whatever you have need of. Hear me, there's favor on the other side of obedience today. And I don't know what that is for you, but I'm telling you, it's there. You know, it's kind of like Pastor James. Pastor James does a lot around here, right? He's lead pastor that's running this whole place. He's media, he's all kinds of things, but he's also, um, I don't know if I like pastor of fitness or pastor of muscles. I don't know which one I like better. You know, when the, the reason I'm saying this is a lot of us go work out every day, right? And Pastor James is definitely in the best shape and he knows the most about it. And for a guy like me, I feel like every time I talk, I talk about this workout journey that I never complete. But one of the things he always says is, you have to work out and you have to eat right, okay? Like what you want is on the other side of those two things. If you don't do those, you're never gonna get there. So I'm like, Dr. Pepper, little Debbie, but I'm doing curls, <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm like, lunchtime, KFC, $5 fill up, let's go. But this is what I realized. What I truly want is really on the other side. And he's laid it out. He's like, this is all you have to do. You wanna look better? You wanna preach in a tank top instead of a sweatshirt? This is what you do. I know that'd be a little awkward, right? But who knows? But he's like, literally, Work out and eat right, and you get the, the results, the favor. It's right there. But if I choose not to do that, I can't blame anybody but me. Like, I know what's right. I'm riding back from KFC. You know how you're driving. I don't know if you drive and eat fried chicken, but that's an art, right? And you're like, man, look at me. Like, and I'm going to go work out today. So this is what I think. Working out and eating fried chicken is better than not working out and eating fried chicken, right? But again, I'm still never going to receive everything God has for me. 
And he's like, this is all you have to do. I'm like, ah. And I feel like we're that way sometimes, right? I just feel like on the other side of obedience, there's sometimes God is, maybe it's a financial thing for you. Maybe God has spoken to you and said, I want you to give or I want you to do this or do that. And you're like, I don't know. And what you don't realize because you're thinking you don't have it, but God's thinking like, man, if, I, if, if you can take this step, I'm gonna meet you on the other side. You know what I'm saying? I truly believe in God meets us on the other side of obedience. And, and check this out. Not only what God asks you to do, but what your pastors ask you to do. You know, I got a thing, I think Pastor Steph spends Man, all week, I got an office that's kind of diagonal to her now. And first of all, someone's always in there. Someone always has to talk to her. She's got so much going on and she's trying to message prep. She's got a lot going on, right? And she's trying to hear from the Lord to bring a message to encourage you to build up the body, to build up the church. But I'm gonna be honest, a lot of these messages have action steps to them. Why? Because she wants you to be all that God has called you to be, right? She wants you to be all that God has called you to be. So realize that God has instilled your pastors here to help you. And just so I can get some biblical background on that, let's look at Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. It says, now these are the gifts. Notice that word gifts. These are the gifts, gifts Christ gave the church. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Like Pastor Steph is in this role, her and Pastor James, to prepare you to do God's work. Hear me, to prepare you to do God's work. And as a pastor here, and Pastor Steph talked about it earlier, let, let me tell you what I'm asking you to do. I think everyone in this room should be on a team. Everyone in this room should serve on a team. Well, Pastor, that's crazy. Ah, it's really not. You just need more volunteers. Maybe. I mean, it's always great to have more volunteers, but this is what I know. Man, there's so much favor on the other side of serving. Whenever you, you realize it's not about me, do you realize like every Sunday morning, we have a huddle with like 80 to 100 volunteers that put on this service every Sunday. And I'm telling you, there's something God does when you step outside of yourself. That's why we go to Belize. When you step out, sometimes it's a shock to your system. Step outside of your world and go into someone else's. And I'm telling you, I truly believe as a pastor on this church, I, I, I would encourage you to join a team here, to be a part of what God is doing here. Be a part of serving, coming in and saying, you know what, today is not about me, but it's about what I can give to someone else. And maybe you're in this room and you're like, Pastor Monk, you don't get it. I've read the whole thing. I've got it all figured out. Man, that is awesome. Because let me tell you what, somebody in that group needs you. Because again, remember, it's not always about what you need, but it's about you joining a team and bringing something to that team that it needs. That if you've got it all together, I'm telling you, there's a team of people that don't. I'm one of them. Come and encourage me. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm saying? I mean, favor is yours. And, and you ask me, like, why is this such a big deal? I'm telling you. Let me read John. Uh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 6. This is what it says. It says, as God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. In the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor, and now is the day of salvation. Now is the time of God's favor. I don't know about you, but there's plenty of things we put off in life. I'll do that next week. I'll do it. I'm going to tell you, I don't know about you, but when I put things off, they never happen. Maybe you're in this place today and goes, yeah, I thought about joining the team, but this and this. No, I'm telling you, there's a card right in front of you. It says connect card. You can put right there. You want to serve on a team and we'll reach out to you this week and get you hooked up. Why? Because we know God has something for you on the other side of serving. It's not because we just want tons of volunteers around us because we know what God does when you step outside of yourself and say, you know what, God, I'm gonna begin to serve my life. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you my whole life. And again, I've been where I've come into church and just sit in the background and been like, that, I, that's all I wanna do. And guess what? That's all the favor I received. Don't get me wrong. You can just do that. And again, favor is yours. A measure of favor is yours. But I'm telling you, for a lot of us in this room, God is calling you to something more. I'm telling you, it's on the other side of you just stepping out. I don't know. I don't know anybody. Step out. Man, if you don't come to the men's breakfast, let me encourage you. Step out. Come and make connections. There's other men in there that need the experiences and what God has done in your life. Come and encourage someone else. Amen? Join these Bible studies. I'm telling you, we provide all this stuff. Why? To make you better. So you can then make the change in the world that we live. Amen? Pastor Monk, why is it a big deal? Let me tell you one more time, right? So check it out. There's another favorite scripture of mine. Acts 2, 42 through 47 says it like this. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and they had everything in common. They sold property, possessions to give to anyone who was in need. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with gladness and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor 
of all the people. And the Lord added to the number daily those who were being saved. Amen? And I'm telling you what, that's what we're here for, to introduce people to Jesus. That's why you're here, to come, get encouraged, get a word for healing and restoration to come in you, whatever situation you come out of. Let me tell you what, and I understand there is a time that you need to come in and receive. I've been there. I've quit church before. I know what it's like to come in and say, God, I just need some healing in my life. But I'm telling you, God is never meant for you to stay there because he wants you to change the world that you live in. That's the people in your house. That's the people on your job. That's the people at your grocery store you see all the time. God is trying to encourage you. God is trying to equip you. He's trying to give you favor. Amen. Favor like the New Testament church that we realize God can add daily to the number of people that are being saved, that are finding out who Jesus is. I want to encourage you to respond to the favor. Amen. You know, I got a text as I was preparing this message. Let me drink some water before I read it for you. All right, check this out. So I'm preparing this message and I get a text. And this is what it says. Oh, wrong one. That could have been awkward. <laughs> I know I look good, babe. Thank you. I'm, I'm just kidding. She didn't send that, but she could have. Anyway. All right, so let me read this text I got. Preparing this message. This is what it says. It says, hola, favorite family. I hope this is an answer to prayer because God has been so good to us lately. We would like to sponsor one of you guys to go to Belize this year. Let me know if you need cash, a check, or whatever. Love y'all. Man, yeah, that's awesome, right? But let me, let me tell you what it truly is. And it's, it, it couldn't have came at a more perfect time. I know this couple. I love this couple. But guess what I know? They expect favor in their life. And if you notice when she said, I love this, she says, because God has been so good to us. She's acknowledging the, the favor in their life. Because God has been so good to me. Guess what? I can't just keep it all to myself. You know what? I have to take action. God has been so good to me that it's not just about me that I realize, you know what? I want to... I want to spread the favor. I want favor to flow through me and then to bless someone else. And because favor flowed to me in my house and we get a trip to Belize, let's go. Let me tell you what's going to happen. We're now able to take that favor and flow to the people of Belize. And the cycle continues because what it is, God says, you know what? I know I can trust you because as I give you, you know, the Bible says where um, if he can trust you with a few things, he knows he can make you ruler over many. What is that? That there, there's, there's tests that come in our life and God's like, I can trust you with this. And you're like, it's not just about all what you can do for you, but you realize it's about what you can do for someone else. Amen. I'm telling you, that's what favor is about. Guys, we all have a, a level of favor in here. And I'm going to get ready to close. And I know I'm almost went long, but man, I want you to, to just see the favor that's in your life, guys. I want you to expect it. I want you to acknowledge it. And I want you to respond to it, church. I want us to be a church man that responds, that, when, that just like that, when God does something great in your life, that you truly realize a lot of times it's not just for you, but it's because God's wanting you to do something else with it. You know, we have, again, I, you know, when I go back to our team of volunteers of people that sacrifice their Sunday to, to hold babies and play with kids and to open doors and all those things, man, it's just, it's just people realizing, God, you know what? You've done so much in my life. You've shown me so much favor in my life. I want to show that favor to others. And I would encourage you guys. In just a moment, uh, we're going to call up the prayer partners. They're going to be at the front of the stage here. So again, if you need prayer today, if there's anything going on in your life today, um, they're going to be up here. We're going to be taking up offering in just a moment. Maybe you're that person that's been like, I'm not sure about giving God. I, I've, I've done the budget. I hadn't done the Dave Ramsey yet, but I know these numbers ain't matching. But maybe God's saying, trust me, I have what you need on the other side of obedience. Amen. Again, you have, you have connect cards on the pew in front of you. And we encourage you guys to fill those cards out. Man, if, if, if you've filled out a card before, just let us know you're here. And some people say, man, this is crazy. Why do we do all these cards? You know what? We want to know that you're here because this is what we want to do. If we see you're not here, we want to we, we wanna check on you. Maybe on those cards, you got a prayer request. Something's going on in your life. You need us to join together. I'm telling you, our prayer team prays and prays and prays for you guys. Maybe you want to join a team today. Maybe you're like, you know what? Pastor Monk's right. And I know Pastor Steph mentioned this morning. She's like, you know, if you've been here a little while and you like it, I don't care if it's your first Sunday. Like, let's go. Get involved. Right? Sign up. Join a team. Join a community. I'm telling you, we're all after the same thing, guys. We're after God's purpose in our life. Being the best version of ourselves, Not only for our friends and our family, but for the world around us that has no idea the power of what Jesus can do in their life.
have no idea. Some people around us have no idea the favor that God has showed us. When we look back at the life we live, some of us, we just thank God that we're in the building today. Because we've done things and we've done things we're not proud of, but man, thank the Lord that God showed favor upon us, amen?